cannot afford to depend on anybody to feed us because he that control your food control your revolution. The Good Food Revolution started because we realized that we were facing a number of different challenges and social problems, health and environmental problems. Farmers do a lot of um, synthetic fertilizers and those fertilizers are sometimes carcinogenic. When you're using those chemicals, you have to have all kind of gears and all kind of stuff. What we eat is so important for our health. We need to be considerate of the impact of farming practices on the environment. Our soils will be healthier. Um, our workers will be happier as well. They don't have to use the chemicals. They don't have to wear the clothing that uh, is required in order to spray the chemicals. This is warm bush. You could save a lot of money from your health care if you just eat what's right. To me, it's a movement. It's a green movement. I would encourage all St. Lucians to grow their own food, eat what they grow and grow what they eat and to grow it organically or as naturally as possible. I have a little crop of peppers there in between the plantain too. The initiative was to address the, the youth unemployment, to address our uh, production of food so that we have more food available, more healthy food available locally at an effective cost that persons could afford. The idea was to be able to provide this healthy organic food, to provide information so persons could make decisions about healthier food and healthier living, and really to make it easier to have this food available. So there was training across the island to farmers so that farmers would be able to develop skills for agricultural production. I'm Lisa, a young self-driven farmer. Uh, my name is Eulalias Bascom. I'm from Ancillary. My name is Franklin Leach Tafari Fugas. Um, the name of my farm is called the Ethiopian Kingdom of Agriculture. They like to use these in our mojitos. Matthew Hansen is my name. Uh, the name of the farm is Emerald Farm. We met quite a few very, very interesting persons who are passionate about conserving the environment and making sure that there are no negative impacts on the environment because of the way that we produce our food or the sorts of things that we plant or how we dispose of our waste. And anything that negatively impacts the ecosystem will, has that potential to negatively impact human health. And that is also why the Good Food Revolution is so important from the human health perspective. It was, it was important that um, the medical voice and the health voice be heard in this matter. And also the pesticides board was brought on board so they could guide this transition and, and give guidance on how we would transition from a country which has used a lot of agrochemicals in the past to one that is cognizant of the impacts of these chemicals and is now putting measures in place to reduce the negative impacts of chemicals in our food, in our food chain and in our system. And if you look at diseases nowadays, the non-communicable diseases in particular, especially diseases like cancer, and one looks at chemical exposures in the environment and in our foods, and see how those correlate with, with cancers. Those chemicals is more or less like steroids. It's, you know, and it is very harmful because um, when you're using those chemicals, you have to have all kind of gears and all kind of stuff. One can begin to appreciate how important healthy food is and of course having a healthy diet available to all um, St. Lucians is so important to doctors like myself. It's easy to become dependent on those chemicals. You end up with a damaged environment, damaged soil, um, you lose the beneficial insects that help uh, keep the bad ones at bay. We should also be looking at a clear policy on, on GMOs um, and see how to ensure that human health can, is not negatively impacted by the propagation of certain um, genetically modified organisms. 
my vision is to focus on going green. I make my own fertilizer. I do um, fermentation of fruits, vegetables, fish. So I, my fertilizer is for free, basically. I was just doing some, um, some weeding this morning and I was so happy while weeding. I see my farm is in festival with ladybirds. Ladybirds, any farm or any place or any farmer that has ladybirds on their farm should be smiling. They eat the bad insects that, that harms your plant. We've gotten away from the use of synthetic chemicals. We use only organic or plant-based um, pesticides, herbicides, and soil amendments. So we don't, use, we don't use any chemicals. Now the pesticide, we do have to use pesticides, but they are plant-based. So those are things like neem oil, orange oil. For example, when I grow my tomatoes, I use um, baking soda to help change the pH level of the tomato leaf. So in doing that, it'll be pest resistant. The flowers feed the bees. You may treat them with one particular pesticide or one particular chemical. They rapidly can evolve past that to resist that. And so it requires the use of another chemical and then another chemical. And so it's just kind of an, uh, a never ending loop. So I am encouraging everybody, please try your best not to use chemicals at all or use it as minimal as possible. We shouldn't be using chemicals here. You've got natural fertility that's, that is in the soil um, just waiting to be unleashed, you know, and there's, at least on our farm, we don't have a tremendous amount of biology um, because it's been farmed for a long period of time without really giving back to it, but it's there. So we want all St. Lucians to become part of this good food revolution. The revolution is not something that will happen with just one person. Everybody has to get on board. And there we have, um, where we did some harvesting. We are working with the Governor General in her own garden where she does her own uh, planting organically and to, to raise the awareness of the value and the health benefits that you get from growing food in a more organic way, in a more sustainable way. Back in the days, everything was organic. Our grandparents ate organic food because there were no inputs, no chemicals, nothing destructive in the food that they ate. And so we're striving to get back to that stage using our, our Governor General as a, a perfect example of a good quality food and uh, mechanisms of growing, mechanisms of planting that will allow us to have the best quality of, of produce available. From the time, you know, I grew up, I always ate what we grew. So it became, you know, a part of me. And sometimes I even say right now my, my food tastes haven't changed. <laughs> People have to be thinking of, of eating healthier, healthier foods, um, growing their own food where possible, supporting the local market and the local farmers who are doing everything to provide food that is free of chemicals and harmful GMOs and other harmful substances. The Shadow Benny, which is a local uh, uh, medicinal and... If you look at our food import bill at, at well over $250 million a year, and you ask yourself, could we not be doing better to produce our own food, which could be more healthy, um, could provide us with the food security, knowing that we, we are not dependent on, on foreign markets. That's cat whisker clean your kidneys. Well, when I market my produce, I market my produce as a low um, chemical produce. So I tend to find clients more susceptible to buying than um, produce that use a lot of chemical. Consumers are becoming increasingly health conscious in this era. Um, and therefore, Tropical Healthy Harvest, our goal is to be sustainable and environmentally friendly in our farming practices. If we want to be profitable doing organic or natural farming, we cannot copy what conventional farmers are doing and expect to make more money than them. I can draw your attention to a few examples. Different varieties. This is a yellow or white um, Asian eggplant. 
Um, we're experimenting with it. We've had some problems with pests, but we've gotten very good production off of these young plants. Also, everyone has heard about Moringa. This is becoming one of our most popular beverages here on the resort. We make a green juice with Moringa. I wouldn't give you the whole recipe, but fruit juices and other um, herbs and spices um, that our, our guests are loving. Um, I also want to draw your attention to this um, Kalalu, Zepina, something that has been kind of ignored um, in our diets, but is the most nutritious green that we can grow, period except for maybe the Moringa. Okay, so this is more nutritious than that expensive kale, and this grows easily without pesticide, without fertilizer. This plant here is over six months old, and we are harvesting pounds off it every week. In St. Lucia, we don't consume enough greens and fruits. We tend to consume more dry and starchy food, which is very bad for our health, especially if we don't do regular exercise. This is a, a beautiful land with very fertile soil and so we really shouldn't be doing anything to disrupt that, uh, disrupt that, the natural cycle here. And anything that negatively impacts the ecosystem will, has that potential to negatively impact human health. Ça, si nous ça fait d'autres essayer manger, ça au planter, même si c'est pas vous qui plantez, mais c'est pour ces planteurs, ces, ces farmers, essayer chercher manœuvre pour que de vous pas servir trop chimique. We need to have a healthy nation. If health fails, everything else fails. And that is also why the Good Food Revolution is so important from the human health perspective. I would most certainly encourage consumers to consume more locally grown organic food crops. Offer the benefits, talk about the nutritional density of the food, talk about the cleanliness of the food, talk about the storage life of the food. Storage life is a lot longer with organic produce than it is with chemical produce. I'm appealing to all St. Lucian, my fellow St. Lucian, to eat healthy, you know, because nobody likes to be sick. For more information on the Good Food Project, the Good Food Revolution Project, persons can call the Department of Sustainable Development at 451-8746 and ask for information. They can also call the Department of Agriculture to find out how farmers can get training in organic production and other things that they can do to become involved and to be part of the Good Food Revolution. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution.